Hello again, welcome to Football 360. It's our grand final show for 2013. Bayswater City have done it, winning the treble and capping the year off with a championship trophy. In a moment, we'll show you how they did it, but it wasn't our only match on the day. Our highlights begin with a grand final between ECU and Perth in the under 18s. Yeah, well done to Inglewood and Perth in the Resis and under 18s. Time now for the main action of the day, our grand final between Bayswater and Stirling at Leeter Stadium. Leeter Stadium was again the focal point for one of the biggest football events of the year. And as expected, thousands of people flocked to the venue to witness who would be crowned champions for 2013. On the stands, this spot looked lost, trying to serve up the sizzle as the faithful fans and mascots revved up the crowd. Inside, the coaches, Bayswater's Chris Coyne and Stirling's Doug Hesketh, offered their thoughts at a pre-match function, while Penny Tannehoth, Peter Kalitsos and veteran broadcaster John O'Connell were awarded life membership to Football West. The national anthem echoed in the background as the officials and players made their way onto the pitch for an historic battle. Lions captain Andy Brown took the coin toss alongside Basie's stand-in skipper Paddy Quinn. Bayswater City were on the attack from the start, putting Lions keeper Alex Viteski under pressure on the edge of the penalty box. The league's top goalscorer Gustavo Marolanda taking the free kick, shooting just wide. Adrian Caceres led an inspirational move, crossing the ball in, but Brian Farrell couldn't finish with conviction. Jamie Coyne sent in a long ball to Brian Farrell, who knocked it to Gustavo Caraccioni, the Brazilian striker forcing Viteski to pull off a reflex save. Caraccioni then had the best chance of the half, but failed to convert. Viteski again, the hero for the Lions. And it was Sterling who broke the deadlock first after the ball was turned over. A well-worked goal beginning with Daniel Machewski, Phil Arnold with a dummy, and Gareth McGlynn fired the ball home with a stunning strike. City keeper Devon Spence with no chance of stopping the shot. 
The Lions pushed ahead, Dean Evans forcing Spence to save again. Sterling 1-0 up, going into the break. Eight minutes into the second half, Marulanda equalised with a simple tap-in after Viteski spilled the ball from blocking Caceres' shot. Marulanda celebrating in Colombian style. The Lions pressed on. A deep ball in fell to the feet of Andy Todd, who tried to stab the ball home. Phil Arnold then attempted to roll the Lions ahead, but the Bayswater shot stopper saved well. With three minutes to go, a Brian Farrell cross found Todd Howarth, who fired low and hard, beating Groteski at the near post. The goal sending City fans and the bench into a frenzy. The Sterling camp feeling the game was slipping away. But the Lions had one last ditch attempt. But then the final whistle blew, sending City players, coaches and their fans into raptures. Bayswater snatching a piece of silverware they had been chasing for decades. I've been stuck for words at the moment. Obviously all the, all the hard work and all the people behind the scenes that have, have put so much effort into the great club. Uh, I'm just very proud at the moment because we have worked really hard and a lot of credit must go to the players but as all, you know, the backroom staff need to take some as well because they've been superb. As Chris said, we've been beating since uh, November. We've worked really hard and all the hard work's paid off. Uh, it's been, you know, three, three trophies out of four. We can't, uh, we can't fault, uh, you know, it's been a really good year. I'm really proud of them. And Chris, a massive journey for you. Your first year as a coach. People are going to want to know what's the key to your success. <laughs> hard work, I suppose, or luck. No, listen, I've been fortunate. I've got a great group of boys. Um, I've wanted to be a coach for a long time and obviously I've set high standards for myself in both my playing career and now my coaching career. So, you know, well, I've enjoyed it this year. Obviously, it's a tough gig to crack next year again, but we'll start working. We'll have a week off and we'll start going again um, next week. So, really enjoying it and really looking forward to next year now. Doug, fair to say your boys fought hard out there. Your reflections on the end result? Uh, obviously, yeah, very disappointed because, you know, we've played thousands of minutes of football this year and it all come down to a few minutes of, you know, lapses of concentration maybe and, you know, and put ourselves into situations we couldn't recover from. Uh, but, you know, I've got to give Bayswater credit second half anyway. I thought we, were, we had it in the first half and then we never really got going in the second. And once they got a sniff with the first goal, um, you know, they were up for it and then we lapsed concentration and we got punished, so no complaints. Uh, very proud of what we've achieved for the year and, um, you know, um, just disappointed the end result. City's Todd Howarth was named Man of the Match and received the Gary Meraki medal. I feel really good. Uh, it's a good bunch of lads here. Uh, we worked really hard that second half and, uh, yeah, really happy to uh, come away with the win and I think everyone deserves it here. Yes, congratulations to Bayswater City and their coach Chris Coyne on a sterling job indeed. And that wraps up the season and the show for 2013. On behalf of Football West and the crew at Football 360, we'd like to thank you for your support during 2013. Until next time, it's bye for now.